Okay, this is the question on the photoelectric effect from the matric 2016 question paper. And you can see clearly there's a graph here. It says a learner is investigating the photoelectric effect for two different metals, silver and sodium, using light of different frequencies. The maximum kinetic energy of the emitted photoelectrons, here, this is my EK on this axis, is plotted against the frequency of the light for each of the metals as shown on the graph below. Then it says, define the term threshold frequency. So threshold frequency is the minimum frequency of a photon or light that is needed to emit electrons from the surface of a metal. It says, which metal, sodium or silver, has the larger work function? Explain the answer. Okay, so we know that the threshold frequency is related to the work function. You can see here, okay, the work function is equal to Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. So which of these is going to have the larger work function? Well, if you look on this graph here, an electron that is emitted with a kinetic energy of zero is emitted at the threshold frequency. So the threshold frequency for sodium is 5,94 times 10 to the 14. Always remember on these graphs that the scale is over there. And then there's also this one is 11,42. So the threshold frequency, this value where the intercept is, is the threshold frequency. The threshold frequency for silver, okay, threshold frequency for silver is greater than the threshold frequency for sodium. Okay, so which one has the bigger work function? Which one has the larger work function? The large one with the larger frequency. So silver has the larger work function because the threshold frequency is greater than for sodium, okay, and the threshold frequency is related to the work function, F0 is proportional to W0. Okay, now it says to name the physical constant represented by the slopes of the graph. So if you have a look, what is going to be the slope of this graph? Now, this is you don't have to include this in the answer, but I'm just showing you. So the slope is going to be energy over frequency. So if you've got any kind of a graph, yes, here is an equation linking energy and frequency. So if I say E equals HF, then E over F is going to be equal to H. So the slope on this graph is Planck's constant, H. Okay, remember Planck's got a C in his name. If you don't know how to spell his name, go look on the data sheet where it says Planck's constant and copy his name properly from there. Okay, it now says to you, uh, if light of the same frequency is shone on each of the metals, in which metal will the ejected photoelectrons have a larger maximum kinetic energy. So remember that there's this formula that links this. Okay, so if we look at 10.1.4, the energy that you're shining on the metal is going to be used on the work function, and then the extra energy is going to give the photons some kinetic energy. So when you shine the, the the light, the source of energy on the metal, some of it is taken up by the work function and then the what's left over gives you the kinetic energy of the emitted photoelectrons. So which of these is going to use the least energy for the work function? It's going to be sodium. So sodium is going to have the most energy left over in order to um, let out speedy little photoelectrons. So 10.1.4, the answer is going to be silver because it's got the lower threshold frequency. Now it says to you, in a different photoelectric experiment, let's change the color of the pen here. In a different photoelectric experiment, blue light obtained from a light bulb is shone on a metal plate and electrons are released. 
the wavelength of the blue light, remember wavelength is lambda, is 470 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, and the bulb is rated at 60 MW. Now look at this MW, this is a little m, so this is a milliwatt, okay? It is not a megawatt, it's a milliwatt. So this is actually 60 times 10 to the negative 3 watts, okay? But now it says to you the bulb is only 5% efficient. That means this is the maximum power rating of the bulb, but it's only 5% efficient. It's only transferring so much electrical energy into light energy. It says to you now, Calculate the number of photons that will be incident on the metal plate per second, assuming all the light from the bulb is incident on the metal plate. So they're just saying like when you shine this light on the plate, you're not like shining it half on the plate, half off the plate. The whole focus of the light is on the plate. So as much energy as is coming out, the light is ending up on the plate. But what you have to remember is that it is only 5% efficient. So the light bulb is boasting. It's going to give you 60 milliwatts, but in reality it is only 5% of the 60 times 10 to the negative 3 watts. So if you work that out on your calculator, it's going to give you 3 times 10 to the negative 3 watts. Okay, now you need to remember that watts is power, which is the rate of doing work. So this is 3 times 10 to the negative 3 joules per second. Okay, And this question is asking you the number of photons per second. So in one second, because we know the power of the light bulb, and it is 3 times 10 to the negative 3 joules per second, so in one second, the energy that this light bulb is emitting is 3 times 10 to the negative 3 joules because power is the rate of doing work. So if we say in one second, we just get the joule value of the energy. Okay, so in one second, the amount of energy the light bulb emitting is that much energy. Now, every little photon that pops off there okay has its own amount of energy and we can work out the energy of the photon based on E equals HF okay or we can say if we don't want to use E equals HF we say E equals HC over lambda okay so let's look at the wavelength of a photon of light from this light bulb one photon from the light bulb, the energy of one photon is going to be 6,63. Okay, we should write here E of the light, and this is E of a single little photon. This is 6,63 times 10 to the negative 34. Remember that values on your data sheet. So is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, over lambda. Lambda is given in the question. 470 times 10 to the negative 9. So if you work this out, the energy of one photon, if you put it into your calculator, you end up with 4,23 times 10 to the negative 19. Okay, so the light bulb is punching this much energy every second onto the metal. Okay, but the, that light energy is made up of all of these millions of photons with each a little tiny amount of joule energy. So the number of photoelectrons, number of photons, is going to be the total amount of energy being pumped out. Because remember, each one little, little photon has got this tiny amount of energy. So the total energy divided by the energy of one little photoelectron is going to give you the number of photons and it works out to be 7,088 times 10 to the 15. Now remember now, anything, if you've got these two numbers, okay, so say you didn't know what you were doing and you just plugged things into formulas, yes? So you've got this number here, 3 times 10 to the negative 3 here, and you've got this number, 4,23 times 10 to the negative 19. 
So even if you don't know what you're doing, I hope you've plugged something into a formula somewhere and there's not too many formulas to use in the photoelectric effect. This number, 3 times 10 to the negative 3, is way bigger than this number. We can't have a half a photon just like we can't have a half an electron. So you have to end up with something that's a whole number. So if you put these two numbers in your calculator and you put them the wrong way up, you are going to end up with a number with a negative exponent. And a number with a negative exponent is a fraction. And you cannot get a fraction of a photon. So then think to yourself, mm, my answer is a fraction, I've done something wrong, and just go flip the number, and then you will end up with the correct answer. So remember, with these numbers are not just numbers, they actually relate to things like electrons and little packets of energy and stuff like that. Okay, okay so that's 10.2.1, this is the final answer to 10.2.1. Now it says to you, Write down, without any further calculation, write down the number of electrons emitted per second from the metal. Well, it is this number, this exact number that you have just calculated, because each photon of light will emit one electron. And that's why they like photoelectrons. So one little packet of energy pops off one little electron, which is why we can claim the electrons can be both a particle and a wave, and light can also be both a particle and a wave. Okay, hopefully you're all clear over there.